Hey, this is Thomas from Amplify Agile. We talk about all things on Agile and digital transformation. Today's topic is program increment planning or short PI planning. And I'm so proud to have with me Dan. Dan is Agile coach at C Prime, the company that delivers performance through Agile product and technology solutions. Welcome, Dan. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here and really excited to share some of the insights from my experiences. Great. Dan, this leads me to my first question. Why is actually such a program increment planning event needed? Strategy changes so often in organizations. Uh, the mm -hmm. environment in which we are uh, around us is changing so often. And so what PI planning really does for us is it allows a team or team of teams to be aligned on a corporate strategy, a vision, and a goal all at the same time, receiving that mm -hmm. information all at once and adjusting and aligning the plans across multiple teams, products, and priorities every quarter. Um, it also is a check to make sure how feasible is that work to do. So it helps mm -hmm. us to understand our capacity, our work in progress yeah. limits, and aim towards predictability, which is really mm -hmm. what we're looking for in agility. Okay, great. Dan, before we get into the details, can you just give a high-level summary on what the PI planning event is about? Sure thing. I think I'm going to have to get into a little bit of details in order to do it. Okay. So let's talk about what the day flows in, and let's talk about day one mm -hmm. first. So day mm -hmm. one in the beginning is all about alignment and it's what I mm -hmm. call popcorn time. So if you've ever been to the movie <laughs> theater, <time>. you, <laughs> you get a big tub of popcorn and you sit yeah. back and you watch that movie. Uh -huh. The teams are doing that same thing. So in the beginning, mm -hmm. we're updating the teams on vision, strategy, goals, yeah. product roadmaps, architectural designs, new, new standards that we're looking to pull forth. And all they're doing is sitting back and absorbing and figuring okay. out what are we going to do as a result of this. All right. So you're getting all on the same page and they just, yeah, the other team's basically just listening, but everyone knows about everything. Yeah. It just gets the same information. Exactly. Then we well, move into our first level of breakouts. Uh, mm -hmm. This is where the teams are going to start figuring out, all right, what are we doing? What are we actually going to execute upon? Yeah. We want them in that day one to do is come up with some of those big risks, some of those big challenges that they're facing. We want okay. them to identify those, possibly start mitigating them, but also address which one of these needs manager attention. And at the okay. end of day one, everyone goes away. Managers mm -hmm. stay behind and the management team helps to mitigate and find resolution to those risks so that the teams can be empowered to complete planning in day two. Okay, that's great. Great. So that management supports that as well and also loves to hear about the risk. Um, I think not every manager wants to hear it, but um, I think that's a good thing to have that open discussion and bring all, everything on the table. So what happens after they get that guidance? So once they have that guidance, the teams are now in power. Management's aware of those mm -hmm. changes, as you mentioned. They complete mm -hmm. out their planning. So they start looking at what features are they capable of completing? What dependencies yeah. do they want to align in? We okay. do one more risk mitigation because as we learn mm -hmm. more, we tend to risk mitigate it out. And then yeah. the entire release train then commits to what they're doing over that yeah. program increment plan. And yeah. like any good agile event at the end, we retro. What okay. things can we do better for the next event? What things can uh, work really well? When you're mm -hmm. in person, it's always about the food could be better or there could be more coffee. Uh, yeah. But that's the kind of stuff that tends to come up. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> As an HI coach, are you actually yourself involved in such PI planning events? Yeah, so I think I've been a part of 100 or so or more. I, I stopped okay. counting a long time ago. But the <laughs> yeah. key thing is Good. the Agile coach is there to help you prepare for it. There's not mm -hmm. only just the logistics, but there's also do we, do we know the team's capacity? Do we know the team's structure? Do we yeah. have the backlog ready to go forth? How do we go in? The other part mm -hmm. of the agile coach in it is not just to get through the ceremony, but it's also in PI planning. We're going to find out a little bit of our deficiencies in the, in, in the team of teams. We're going to define mm -hmm. where there's areas for continuous improvement. 
that agile coach should be committing with the teams to improvements over the next quarter along with the team so that we know and we're working towards that continuous improvement, which is mm -hmm. what a coach is always about. Okay, cool. And for the program increment itself, um, what are the expected outcomes of such an event? Let's first talk about what are not the outcomes of the event, because there's a <laughs> okay. little misconception out there that happens many yeah. times. Mm -hmm. We do not commit to sprints in PI planning. Uh, we yeah. put works in, in sprints so that we mm -hmm. can decide what we're going to do from a, a program increment perspective and what we're going to do from a feature perspective. So the yeah, key but then teams will still do sprint planning in the sprints then not. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because things will change. We know that mm -hmm. if we create a plan in one quarter, it's not going to yeah. last that the entire quarter. We have to yeah. allow for time to change as it's going yeah. in. Mm -hmm. But that alignment every quarter is critical to create a system and a structure that's under control versus mm -hmm. constantly changing. And so yeah. the two artifacts that we hit on program board, which is your features mm -hmm. and your dependencies and mm -hmm. your PI objectives. What value mm -hmm. are you looking to get out of this quarter? Yeah, dependencies like this feature needs to be completed before the other team can then work on the next feature or? Absolutely. Or this mm -hmm. architecture needs to be aligned from a design perspective before it comes mm -hmm. through, if that's been done by an architect team, or these decisions okay. need to be come through, or even yeah. this vendor needs to provide us something to go forth. Mm -hmm. Organizations are complex. That helps to yeah. bring some of the uh, structure around it that we need. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, how do you actually set up such an event? It, it looks like that's a big event, like you're bringing all the teams together. And I mean, yeah, that's probably a big organization if you do it in person. But in these times, probably there's also the need to do it remotely. Absolutely. And we've gotten really good at that over the years because we've had to. Um, mm -hmm. First off, in person, I used to call it a big wedding party, right? Because it was <laughs> yeah. organizing that many people figuring out you know, yeah. what teams need to sit next to each other, what teams don't mm -hmm. like sitting next to each other, etc. Um, yeah. One of the things I would advise, do not try to do something hybrid. Uh, it, mm -hmm. Anything hybrid, half-half, we tend to lose. People always feel like they get lost in the structure um, right. into their... But when you are remote, it's all about making sure that you have the right tooling technology to help support you with that. Mm -hmm. um, we need a backlog management system. We need something that lets us break down the work and that people are transparent to the work. We need yeah. a dependency management system. So something mm -hmm. that allows us to say, hey, team, I need this. I need this from you. We also need some sort of common documentation system where we can be working in documents together drawing things together, drawing boxes. And then we need to be able to pull people in to smaller little virtual sessions as easy as possible. So if I need a couple of people mm -hmm. to come in to work on something, I can do that very quickly. We don't have to look at calendars or things of that nature. Mm -hmm. The other very- So practical... everyone is blocked during that time and they yes. just available for that event. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. The other very practical thing is, Two days virtually is a lot. Move it to three, five-hour days rather than full. It makes it more manageable for a team. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like a, this is also kind of a lot of preparation to to make that successful, isn't it? Um, what would you prepare, mind yourself, on program level or on, on team level? Yeah, so, like, so let's start. I'll, I'll hit it from both program and team because I think it is two mm -hmm. answers there. Let's start with first the program, though. The day mm -hmm. you complete PI planning, you start preparing for the next PI planning. Uh, that starts with updating your roadmap, figuring out what features are going to be important for the next program increment, creating mm -hmm. a refinement schedule for that. You may need other people. You may need other business owners to come in and provide insight, other teams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might want to start working on aligning dependencies early on. Uh, some of those dependencies hopefully are within your release train, but some will be external. Some will be vendors. Can we start yeah. doing some of those uh, alignments early on? And then do you have the right capacity and budgeting to continue going forth? 
if you start seeing that that backlog is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you might want to say, can we get more capacity or do we have to cut that off to make the program incoming event successful? <laughs> so that's from the program perspective. From the team, you have to be a little careful. The team is executing on program increment current. You don't want to distract them with the futures too much. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would say probably about oh, two weeks before the program increment event, you start socializing the features, start for socializing some new architecture diagrams, some vision, mm -hmm. some goals. You don't want the program increment planning to be the first time they see it, but okay, you don't yeah, want right. it to overload them while they're still looking to execute in program increment mm -hmm. one. Yeah, yeah, that they can at least go through it and then sleep over it and yes. then go into the API planning. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Dan, for your valuable insights. Do you have any final word or key takeaway for our participants? Yeah, I think it's some final advice when you're going through with it. I'm, I'm seeing more and more that people are trying to make your program increment event perfect. And mm -hmm. You don't want to make it perfect. Um, it is an event to help to manage an unpredictable uh, set of things that are going on. Um, and so mm -hmm. we know that, you know, corporate strategies are changing, team structures are changing, technologies are changing, all of that is happening. What we're mm -hmm. doing PI planning for is to organize and get all on the same page for a given period. We know we're going to deviate off from then. But for that given period, we want to have some of those tough discussions. So we want to have business owners which are prioritizing and battling over priorities. We want to have those architectural discussions as to how are we going to build this? What are we going to do? We want to have the battles over, you know, which dependency is more important than the next and how do we do that? And so okay. my biggest advice for people executing is don't try to make the event perfect. Try to make the event structured so that you can have really challenging conversations that help the organization mm -hmm. move forward. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you so much, Dan, for your valuable insights. And thank you, dear participants, for joining us today. We are available as video and podcast anywhere. Podcasts can be found. So please feel to like and subscribe and drop us any questions you might have in the comment sections and see you in the next one.